Welcome to the Bruin Report. I'm Kat DeRosha. And I'm Matt Sanofsky. We're here at the Curb Event Center checking in with the men's and women's basketball teams on its Missouri Valley Conference play. Starting with the men's team, the Bruins have had a season filled with inconsistency. After a win against Illinois State on January 10th, the Bruins found themselves at 4-1 in the conference. But then, a dreaded four-game losing streak hit the team. Now, the Bruins find themselves sitting at 7-7 in conference play. That's a big difference from last season when the Bruins finished 14-6 in conference play. How well do you think the team will recover with the remainder of the season? Kat, as you know, Belmont prides itself on 13 consecutive seasons of 20-plus wins. With seven regular season games and the MVC tournament remaining, Belmont's opportunities at reaching 20 may be limited. Question is, Kat, can Belmont find a way to make it 14 straight? I'm not sure, Matt. With the Bruins' most recent win against Valparaiso University on Saturday, it'll be interesting to see how they compete for the remainder of the season. How's the women's team looking so far? Well, Matt, the women's team has been on fire. The Bruins currently sit at the top in the MVC with a 10-2 conference record. Belmont has kept 14 of its 21 opponents below 65 points this season, and 10 teams to scores under 60. After the team's win against the Southern Illinois Salukis on Sunday, the Bruins continue to climb up the ladder. I'm curious to know the impact of some of the star players in the women's team. I'm glad you asked, Matt. Freshman guard Jalen Banks earned NVC Freshman of the Week six times this season. Her biggest performance was in the season opener against the University of Missouri after scoring her career-high 23 points. As for junior forward Tessa Miller, she became the first Bruin to earn 500 rebounds in her career since Maddie Wright after the win against Murray State on February 2nd. Miller owns 501 rebounds in the past three seasons she's been at Belmont. And we can't forget the redshirt junior guard Tootie Jones. She made an exciting impact back from her season-ending injury in December of 2022. After making the preseason All-MVC second team, Jones recorded her second career double-double with 12 points, a career-best 10 assists, and a second in career steals with 214 since the team joined the NCAA. To top it off, junior transfer Kendall Cheeseman has found holes in the defense like Swiss cheese with her career-high 28 points and nine three-pointers against Georgia State in November. Cheeseman averages 11.2 points and a 47.3 field goal percentage. What about the men's team? Who would you say sparks action on the court? Well, Kat, I like to call Belmont a three-headed monster, with sophomores Malik Dia, Cade Tyson, and Jacoby Gillespie absolutely terrorizing opposing defenses. With all three, you never know if you'll get a quick jumper, a powerful dunk, or a long three that will leave you in awe. During a game in Southern Illinois in early January, Gillespie injured his hand, requiring senior guard Keyshawn Davidson to step up. And Kat, let me tell you, he's helped fill that void. He has a pull-up jumper that leaves opposing defenders in the dust, and his passes lead to easy buckets for his teammates. Don't worry, Belmont fans, Gillespie is back and looked healthy in his return against Missouri State. It's great seeing Gillespie back on the court, especially after his impact in securing the win against Missouri State last Saturday and rival Murray State on Wednesday. Just like how Belmont junior Will Sykes made the half-court shot for tuition and secured a free semester of tuition during the first half of the game against Murray State. What a game that was. But passing possession from on the court to the sidelines, Belmont's bench seems to pick up the slack from losing its size from the transfer portal. I agree, Belmont's Achilles heel lies in its bench. It's a very young bench consisting of all freshmen and sophomores. Granted, these guys could destroy me in a game of one-on-one. -on -one. The Cat, in a physical and older conference like the MVC, Belmont needs guys who can match a persistent style off the bench. Brigham Rogers isn't afraid to get physical, but he also tends to get in foul trouble. If he can limit the fouls, he could be what Belmont needs off the bench. The women's team also has a tight-knit bench, but looking past the sideline and into the paint, sophomore transfer guard Emily LaChapelle and redshirt freshman forward Caroline Backus made their collegiate debuts this season and helped to keep the Bruins' momentum strong. And of course, we can't forget junior transfer Carmen Harrison, who pushed the Bruins in the game against Drake University on January 19th, where she finished with eight points, four rebounds, three assists, and a career-best three steals. And with healthy teams entering March Madness, there's only one thought in Belmont's minds make a deep run in the MVC tournament and secure that bid to the 2024 NCAA tournament. Let's just hope both teams can find a way to finish their season strong. The men's team will head to St. Louis for Arch Madness on March 7th through 10th, while the women's team will travel to Moline, Illinois for the Hoops in the Heartland tournament March 14th through the 17th. We'll just have to wait and see how the teams do. I guess so. For VNN, I'm Kat DeRosha. And I'm Matt Sanofsky. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, Bruins.